Hi all, so let's go look at the AP Physics 1. This is the first practice QQT that the AP uh, College Board put on the, their YouTube channel uh, this past week when they were going over some questions. And this one's very similar to the um, the the practice one from the uh, exam guide. If you guys know, when I talked about all the different kinds of questions there were, so uh, it's very similar to the uh, QQT question from there. So let's uh, take a look at this. So I have a small sphere. Oh, I'm also going to um, try to type out these answers because I feel like they've restructured the questions to where like they're more amenable to typing. Um, I still would suggest having the ability to handwrite and take a picture as a backup, but uh, I'm going to type out the answers just to see if I can, you know, type out everything since I don't really have to use many equations. So uh, we have a small sphere of mass M is suspended by a string of length L. The sphere is made to move in a horizontal circle of radius R at a constant speed as shown above. The center of the circle is labeled C and the striking uh, the and the String at the and the string makes an angle theta is not with the vertical. Two students are discussing the motion of the sphere and make the following statements. Student one, none of the forces exerted on the sphere are in the direction of point C, the center of the circular path. Therefore, I don't see how there can be a centripetal force exerted on the sphere to make it move in a circle. So, first off, let's see what's wrong with student one answers. Okay. Just because so if, if I were what he's saying is there's a force of gravity and then there's a force, a tension force from the string, okay? Free body diagram. You don't have to do this for your answer, but I'm just sort of illustrating it as to what's hap what this guy is saying. He's saying those are the only forces. Remember, centripetal force is not a new force, not a separate force. Uh, the only forces you should feel are like gravity or anything touching, pushing and pulling on the object. So tension is pulling in this direction. He's saying none of those are in the horizontal direction. Well, um, what's right is that none of those forces are in the horizontal direction, but what's wrong is that while um, uh, none of the forces individually are in the direction, are, are in, are um, toward the center of the circle, as you would expect in circular motion, the horizontal component of tension is acting towards the center towards the center of the circle and thus it acts as the uh, centripetal force okay so that's my answer to part a there and I'll put a like that and yeah that would be good for my answer there let's look at B what is student B saying I see another problem the tension force exerted by the string is at an angle from the vertical therefore its vertical component must be less than the weight of the mg of the sphere that means the net force in the sphere is a downward vertical component and the sphere should move downward as well as moving in a circle what's wrong with him is he's he's thinking tension equals mg and remember there's a lot of cases where tensions equal to mg but in this case, because it is not accelerating in the vertical direction, it's really the tension is not doesn't have to equal mg. Actually, the vertical component of tension would have to equal mg. Uh, the vertical component of tension equals mg, which causes there to be no net vertical force. Okay. So what is he wrong about this? the student is incorrect in assuming t equals mg that's probably what i read the student what is he specifically wrong about he's saying that the tension is equal to mg the tension is not equal to mg the vertical component of tension equals mg okay so student three correctly derives the equations f net equals uh ft r over l mg equals ft blah 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 to relate the tension force to the net force of the other quantities. Explain how one of the equations can be used to challenge student one's claim. Okay, so how does this equation, uh, remember student one is saying that none of the forces point toward the direction. The left equation is the net force. Remember the net force ultimately, because there's no vertical component, the net force has to be um, the, centripet you know, the centripetal force, which is towards the center of the circle. And so this equation is, is, is illustrating that. This il equation illustrates that there is a net component of the force and it is in the horizontal direction. So how would I type this? I would say um, the first equation, 
um, shows that there is a net force in the horizontal direction. Okay, and that that, uh, that you know, and that that's that's challenging students one's claim, which is the centripetal force. Okay. Now explain how one of the quantity equations can be used to challenge student two's claim. Student two's claim is that student two's claim, student two's claim, is that um, there's nothing. It has to accelerate downward because the tension has to equal mg. But really, here we can demonstrate mg is canceled out by the vertical component of tension. So for d, I would say um, the second equation. Which equation are you using? The second equation shows that the that mg is being canceled out by a component of the, the tension force. And thus, mg is not equal to t to tension. OK, so that's, uh, that's all, all, all we've got to really explain there is that um, the second equation is really demonstrating how the force of gravity is really con is a fraction of tension force. That's why tension is not equal to mg. The students observe that the radius r increases as the speed v of the sphere increases. Together, they derive the equation r equals v squared L over g to calculate the radius of the circle followed by the sphere if its speed is v. Okay, regardless of whether this equation is correct or incorrect, does it plausibly explain the student's observation about the relationship between r and v? So what is the observation that they see? Is they see that r increases as v increases, right? So that the radius, so as it spins faster, the radius gets bigger. And that's what they see, and they want to know if that equation uh, explains that specific relationship. Yeah, and it does, because yes, as v increases, R also increases because R is, you could say maybe R is directly proportional to V. Oh, that's not how you spell proportional. Right? You know, basically as V goes up, right, as this V increases, R increases. That's pretty much all they're they're saying if that's true. This equation does not does not correctly model the relationship between R and V if V is very fast and explains why. Okay, let's look at the picture. What would happen if it moved really fast? If it moved really fast, you would expect the radius to increase, but you would only expect you would expect it to move more horizontal like this, right? This would be the path, right? If if it were moving really 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 fast. Like if I if I swing something really 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 fast, it almost looked like it's horizontal. That means r r should cap out at l the length of the string. Like R should not be go more than the length of the string because assuming that the tension doesn't break, assuming like, you know, we're not breaking the string, which would then like obviously throw off all the equations and all the modeling and it wouldn't move in a circle anymore. So assuming the tension, the string doesn't break, the R should max out at L, okay? So it should, um, so we would say um, physically R should approach the length of the string as v goes very fast as v as the object uh goes moves very quickly i don't know i'm i'm, I'm really terrible at wording those things okay so physically r should approach the length of the string however the equation indicates r would go to would go would increase indefinitely that means if V was the speed of light and I had a super strong string that could hold it in place, that R should be like a giant, giant number, which is not what uh, should happen, which is inaccurate. Okay, so that is how I would say F. Okay, so instead of moving in a horizontal circle, um, so, uh, instead of moving in a horizontal circle, the sphere now makes a new move vertical plane. So it's a simple pendulum. So it's just swinging back and forth, simple harmonic motion. As shown above, the maximum angle theta max of the string makes from the vertical can be assumed to be small. That's usually important. 
I don't know if you know this, but all your equations for harmonic motion, the pendulums, um, especially the pendulum one, assumes that theta is about 15 degrees or smaller. If it's any larger than that, your equations are actually inaccurate. It's not simple harmonic motion anymore. Anyway, the graph below shows data for the square of the pendulum period as a function of string length L. Okay, so what do I expect? When I look at these graphs, I tend to like have a relation. What do I expect it to look like this? So the equation that you should be thinking about is t is equal to 2 pi square root of L over G. Okay, you can look that up on the equation sheet, but that, that's given to you, or that's an equation you should have down in there. Explain how the above graph would change under the following circumstances. Justify your answers. The mass of the sphere increases. Well, let's look at it. See, here's one where I would like to use the equation um, to say this. But if I had to type it out, just to give you an example, if I had to type it out for G, I would say uh, the equation for period of motion depends only on the length of the string and uh, G, the gravity, the gravity, the acceleration due to gravity. The mass of the sphere would have no impact on uh, on the graph, on the period. Okay, H maximum angles increase is decreased. Decrease still a small angle. Again, it's going to say the same thing. The equation, um, um, the um, the angle does not change. The angle decreasing does not change the um, length or of the string or gravity or acceleration due to gravity or g acceleration due to gravity. Thus, um, thus the uh, graph would be unchanged. Okay, still unchanged. I and the pendulum is taken to the moon. This is going to change the graph. What is it going to do? The moon has less gravity, has us has less gravity, smaller g, which would increase the period of the graph, which would increase the period of oscillation. Thus, the graph would shift upwards. It would go in. Uh, the numbers would go up. The period would increase as g is decreasing there okay so you don't have to write the equation explicitly i kind of just hinted at it with like a bunch of words um if you just want to type it out because I, I thought i'd be nice to give you an example of how to type out an answer like this which is what they're kind of gearing you towards uh trying to make it easier for you and because this um this is monday by the way some of the tech issues people have been having with the physics c exam um you know like you might want to have you know be able to type them up but I still would suggest a backup as like having being able to write on pencil and paper. Like honestly, that would just be my preference. Just make sure you you really learn from some of the mistakes um, going on there. But um, and especially if you're taking the calculus exams, I, I don't think I, I would handwrite that whole entire thing. So, okay, the graph above shows the angle theta from the vertical as a function of time for the pendulum. Explain how this graph shows evidence of a net force acting on the sphere and how it shows that this net force is a restoring force. Okay, so this is showing you how the angle changes with respect to time. Um, how it shows a net force acting on the sphere. Um, explain how this graph shows a net force acting on the sphere. Well, the fact that it's like it always goes back towards zero, like no matter what angle you are, it's always like heading back towards zero. So when you're down at negative, you, you're, you're eventually heading back towards it. That would indicate a restoring force. Uh, there's a net force. Okay, so first, why is there a net force? Net force causes a change in um, a change in velocity of the object, right? So um, g um, a net force would cause a change in velocity of an object. And because the angle is not, I don't know, the angle is not changing at a constant, uh, not changing at a constant rate, there must be an acceleration.
which can only be caused which can only be caused by net forced okay that's probably what I would say there what's the second part of it how do we show that it's a restoring force because the angle is always returning back to zero the force appears to be uh, restoring it back to equilibrium okay because it's, because the, because it's going on a cycle it's always going back towards zero uh, as time progresses right and so that makes it a restoring force okay as the sphere swings back and forth it must also rotate a smaller route during each swing the figures below indicate the direction the sphere rotates as swing each direction in order for the sphere's rotation to change direction a torque must be exerted on the sphere when the sphere is at its maximum rightward displacement, what is the direction clockwise or counterclockwise of the torque exerted on the sphere with respect to the point of attachment between the sphere and the string? Briefly state why the torque is in the direction you indicated. Okay, so physically, just so we get a sense, it's rotating clockwise, and at the top, it stops, and then as it swings back, it's going to start rotating this way. And then here it's rotating clockwise, and then it stops rotating, and then right afterwards it's going to start rotating this way. Uh, sorry, it's rotating counterclockwise, and then it's going to start rotating clockwise. So what does that tell us? Um, we would say that, so remember, a torque, so let's write what a torque does. A torque causes a change in angular velocity, right? Like, um, so I would say a torque causes a change angular velocity at this point at its the end it's going from counterclockwise to clockwise because the sphere's rotating one way and then afterwards it's rotating the other way the net the the net torque or the the change in velocity must be clockwise right because it was going counterclockwise and then it, it's ending up clockwise. That means the net change is clockwise. Hopefully that makes sense to you. And the way you think of it is like before it was going counterclockwise, after it's going clockwise, so the change is, is clockwise. Um, because of the rightward point, the change in angular velocity is clockwise. The sphere is changing from counterclockwise to clockwise the net torque must be clockwise okay um yep and that's it uh it's clockwise okay and that that finishes the question there